Hey everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'd like to show you how you can create yourself at home following along a scene of a hammock at night with a moon reflecting over water. This is an acrylic lesson for beginners that I'm going to explain step by step every technique, every color mix, every tool that I use I'm going to tell you about. To help me do that on the mic is my husband, John. Hello, guys. He's going to make sure that you can see all the techniques that I'm talking about with one of our cameras. He's going to zoom in to the action, make sure you see the brushstroke, make sure you see what's happening. Also, to help you with that, if you check the description below, there's a link to our website, theartsherpa.com. For this particular video page, and on it is a traceable, if you're not really into drawing, which, by the way, is completely okay. Uh, there's a grid reference if that will help you kind of understand where things are laid out and measured. And there's also a written out step-by-step -step instruction book, a mini book that's available to you that you can download to help you. So there's tons of resources there. If you don't know, this is part of a 30 day free art program where it goes for 30 paintings, each painting building on a concept or an idea going from one to the next so that at the end of the 30 paintings, you have a better understanding of water. We do that in April, so we call it acrylic April. But of course, you can do it any time of the year, whatever you want. You can also just come by and paint this one painting because this one scene spoke to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever brought you and your brushes here, you are certainly welcome. And to that end, get those brushes, get that paint, call back and meet me at the season right now. I would love to show you how you can paint this. For today's class, I'm going to be using an 8x8 eight eight surface. On it, I have a wish or intention for you that you find peace where you are and that your world is calm and happy. Mm, we have the color. A, isn't that nice? That's a good wish. That's a, we have the colors Mars Black, Cad Yellow Medium, Burnt Sienna, Thalo Green, Thalo Blue, Ultramarine Blue. These look a little similar. Uh, deoxazine purple, cad red, quinacridone magenta, and titanium white. All right. This is going to be a fun class, and we're going to start out with a very easy step. So I think there's nothing to do, John, but go step one. For step one, we're going to divide up our canvas into the zones of sky and water. I'm going to come to the upper third, and I'll give you an exact measurement, but I'm going to just eyeball this in where I'm going to have about the upper third of my surface, and I'm going to bring a line across. Now, I'm using a watercolor pencil, so that will vanish into the canvas. And it looks like it's about two and a quarter inches. I might want to just drop it down a little bit and make it two and a half just to give myself some room and you an even measurement. So you can make little adjustments like that. Hmm. And there it is. It's a two and a half. That's easier to get to two and a half inches. So everything above this mark right here is going to be sky and everything below is going to be water. And we can begin by painting in the sky. Let's grab a number 20 bright. This would be like an equivalent of a number eight bright in the long handle lines that I use. But in this one, it's called a number 20. It's a little bigger than the size of my thumb. Mm. I'm going to get it slightly damp. Slightly damp. Slightly. And I'm going to mix my ultramarine blue and thalo blue together because they kind of neutralize each other out a bit. What does that mean? Well, phthalo blue tends to bias really green, and ultramarine blue tends to bias really red. And when you put them together, you get that kind of slightly toned down blue. And we want a slightly toned down blue. I would have thought it was going to be Wonder Twins Activate. <laughs> it's still a really beautiful blue. It just doesn't have strong biases. I'm really surprised there hasn't been a remake there. <laughs> I feel like the Wonder Twins power of bucket. I think that more power has... of bucket of water would have come back. I think that the Saturday Night Live has tried them a couple times. Not really the same thing as like a serious franchise and superheroes. I'm going to brush this back and forth. Oh, come it's on. a fairly solid color. They're as solid as any other DC property. 
Now at the horizon, I'm going to come in with just a little bit of white into my brush. And I'll go ahead and work that in. My surface is still wet. This is a subtle thing, but we're just saying that there's just a little right, light here at the horizon line. Sometimes I turn my canvas just so I have an easier time with the brushability. I'll blend that up. It's a little subtle thing, but it will help our moon kind of show out when it gets there. And we'll appreciate to have it. Let's call that step one. I'm going to actually start the water down at the bottom, which is a little different than what we've been doing. If you're here for Acrylic April and you've been painting with me every day, you'll be like, oh, that's a new side of the canvas. And that's because we're going to be doing like quite a bright aqua. So I'm going to take my phthalo blue and my phthalo green much more into my phthalo green and quite a lot of white. And this bottom half of the surface is going to be very, very aqua. See how aqua it is? Mm, very aqua. Very aqua. And I'm going to make sure this goes around. This is close to the shore, and the water would be kind of more transparent. You can even get a little more white and yellow into here, just brushing back and forth. It's kind of nice. Looks good. Now, rinsing out, I'm going to come from the top down into it and see if I can blend in. I'm going to grab a little of my the oxazine purple, my ultramarine blue, and my phthalo blue. So just like the sky color, but we've added purple. And I'm going to come along here and try to make a very level line, as level as I can make it, which is why I've got my canvas slightly turned. And that's because it's the strong stroke for me. Now, if you were not level confident. I you... would use tape or T-square. Tape. I was going to ask if I could tape. Because you can use a low-tack tape. That gets to be a little more fraught with peril if you're doing it on paper. You've really got to pay attention to your tape, your application, your burnishing if you're doing it on paper. And there's some nighttime water. Nighty night water. Mm. Right, nighty. It's very nighty. Very nighty. And back into the phthalo blue, ultramarine blue. As we come forward. Now, I notice you're putting a little, it's got a little streakiness there. It can have a little streakiness at this stage. That's all right. That's all right. Well, water's going to be a little streaky. That's true. It is covering now. Like, so just make sure that whatever is going on in the streak, that it's still covering and try to keep things as level or horizontal, right, as mm -hmm. you can as you go. So that is our little blend. And we will say that is this step. Let's dry it and we'll come back and put our moon in. Now we're going to place a moon in our calm and serene sky. I'm going to put it a little bit above the water and more centered. I'm going to make it about the size of, I don't know, is this a dime or quarter? Mm. <laughs> I haven't looked at metal money in so long. It's like a nickel. Is that where we're at? It's a little bigger. The dime, smaller than a quarter. This is going to be our little moon. When we know where that is, we're going to take our, I'm going to take my half inch angle brush. And I'm going to grab a little white into my sky color. And I'm going to brush out here a little bit of glow around my moon. Mm. Just a little radiating light, as you do. And coming up above. I don't want this to be so light that it takes over everything, but I don't want it to be a 
invisible either, just like a little bit of atmosphere. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to have a little tree holding this. While this is having a dry, let's take a little reflection down our water. And it'll be a similar thing. We're going to just kind of begin to take some reflections down the water. Mm -hmm. This is the lighter area that the moon might be reflecting on here. And I'm going to just come on the edge of the brush. And you can see what that does is it leaves sort of a feathered line. That angle brush does some neat stuff. It does. And we're going to make it to, we don't want it to be kind of this you know, stiff of a line, but we're just using it to get that working. Now, as I come forward, I'm going to add a little more turquoise to my line. And then right about where the hammock is going to sit, we're going to have some really interesting water ripples. I'm going to rinse out. I'm going to brush out, kind of brush this all out. And then I'm going to take my blue and make Calm, but multi-valued ocean. I'm just taking my thalo blue and coming in from the edge. These are like little waves. And I'm trying to make this little edge uneven. And can brush towards myself if that helps me, which it does. I'm not trying to paint out all of my previous color. I'm just trying to create a little sense of water dimensionality. And that we get by varying the hues. It's just a start. like the, the way that it sort of shimmers in the water. Yeah, we're just making a shimmer, and we want it to be a little bit uneven. It's just the beginning of a thought of something. Let's call that a step and come back and put it in a little more detail. So for the tree to hug a moon, I'm going to take my number four round and get it slightly damp. I'm going to pull out a little of my ultramarine blue and white. We're going to begin to paint in our moon. It's a bright moon tonight. If you were a fan of Star Wars, it could be Death Star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Then you could break it. You could be like, eh. Ah, That's sorry. no moon. That's no moon. I know. Every time I paint a moon, I think of that. <laughs> no moon. But in this case, we want to have this here so the tree has something to hug. I'm going to lighten the left side of the moon. Because I often do. A little more white. Kind of just trying to talk about maybe the the surface being somewhat rough. You can always get a little of your black and blue into it. Mm -hmm. Make some darker craters. I'm going to tap my brush up and down. I like doing this. It's always super fun to me. Moon time is very happy time for me. It's moon time. Yeah. Not a regular time. It's <laughs> moon time. Got to make sure it shows all the way around. Mm -hmm. The moon glow. The moon glow. Also need to make sure that it's not lopsided because the universe tends to make round objects that are fairly round out there in the space. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the meteors and things. Now I'm going to take a chalk pencil 
And I'm going to start to sketch in some structure of the tree. That way, when the tree comes to hold the moon. Mm -hmm. Tree holding moon. Yeah, I know how far out and everything I want this tree to come. And I really want the tree to come out and look like it could sustain and hold a hammock. Mm -hmm. You could use the traceable, though, at this stage or the grid. If you're not confident just freehanding a tree in on your canvas, that would be a really reasonable decision to make. And we do provide those. Uh, if you check the description below and you go by the website, you'll find traceables. You'll find a step-by-step -step mini book. You'll find a grid. And lots and lots of resources to help you. I don't have to do every branch at this stage. I just need to do enough of them to know where the tree is going. Like if I know some of that tree is going to hug there. And then maybe I want to a little branch out here. And maybe a little branch coming here. As they do. Trees like to uh, try to find different areas of light. So it's good to give them some sources. Now this main branch is where my canvas is. So I may take, you know, I may kind of exaggerate it out a bit and bend it. Yeah. So that the hammock has something to kind of really grip to. And now we've got a hammock that's going to be tying here. And it has to be believable that the hammock could be here and it's going to come off around here. So if I tie my hammock here, <laughs> you love, I love my like totally like this is where it is, <laughs> but it is where it is. Bring a little line down. The reason I sketch out my hammock somewhat early yeah. is because it lets me know where in the ocean I can, you know, I'm going to bother to put in a lot of detail and where I might not need to bother to put in a lot of detail because the hammock uh, will be blocking it. Oh, well, yeah. You like do want to make it seem like, you know, somebody could be in here. So it's important to leave room for body. <laughs> I know that sounds mm -hmm. pretty grim, but you need to leave room for body in your hammock. <laughs> Little rope coming off there. And then kind of what I mean by that is here, there should be a bit of a scoop. Mm -hmm. that comes around in perspective that says if somebody was in here, this hammock would, would cradle them. So now that we have that, we kind of know where everything is going. Mm -hmm. You can plan other branches before you, you know, get into the black paint to freehand them all in to say other things are happening perhaps here. It's important to make sure that your branches look as if the world has impacted them. Mm -hmm. And if you struggle with doing trees in your Wanting to do a freehand, just a little thoughtfulness at this stage can make a difference. Remind myself I probably want to kind of put like a, a break or something there in the wood. Now that I know where all of that is, I can come back and put the shadow under the hammock, different parts of this in, or come in and paint the tree and stuff around it. It really is at this stage, I can make those next decisions and get on to the next step. At this stage, we can start putting in some of the drama in our water. I'm going to take a number eight cat's time and pick one that I feel like is ready to be painted with. It's in the right frame of mind. Mm -hmm. Get it a little bit wet. And I'm going to be beginning to take lots of different fun watercolor. And we're going to wiggle back and forth reflections and motion in the water. Now, there is a shadow that absolutely will be under the hammock. Mm -hmm. So it'll be important to make sure that we show that. You can come in and, and do a little ultramarine blue. You can see how each of the blues really plays here. Yeah. There's a lot of color we're playing with.
And the water here is in motion. Rippling. Not churning, not scary. Yeah. Rippling. What you might expect if a breeze came down and and hit it. Mm. Rinse out. Lots of rippling to do. So much rippling. So much. I'm going to make some thalo turquoise, which is my thalo green and thalo blue. Again, I know that I want to have lots of color under the hammock because that would cast a shadow. You know, up front, I'm going to be more in my greens mm -hmm. and yellows. And then, you know, I might pull back more of our darker colors back here. But they will need to weave in together somewhat. The way the water will want to cast light. Mm -hmm. I'm just wiggling this back and forth. And it really does create oh, a lovely man. motion, doesn't it? It really does. That, I like the color added into the waves. And now the important thing about those is you have to keep those brush strokes level relative, don't you? I try to. I try to do this thing where I'm zigging them and zagging them, but also not letting them get to a diagonal. So if you'll take a moment and notice this, I, none of these are particularly diagonal. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. I wouldn't want to go across here like that. I would definitely want to keep these more towards the horizontal. It's a good idea to also take them past the tree just to show that there's something happening there past the tree and come back into my thalo and as again how may cast a shadow on the water mm. that's pretty cool yeah so that's really what we're going to do there um, we can take a little fluid white and a monogram liner. If you're painting with this for the 30 days to paint landscape and water better, mm -hmm. this will remind you a little bit of day four. The glittering of the water coming down. We're going to use the small brush. Nice white paint to get a high glitter that's going to be finding its way down from the moon to where we are. Hmm. We'll just take our time. Yeah. Dotting and dashing. Little ripples. We'll have a bunch of that uh, up front here, mm -hmm. but uh, we'll add our flower reflections at, like more towards the end. Okay. And maybe some of the brown and some of the other colors that are around the water. We just want to get this initial construct in. So even though my surface is turned to the side, I'm trying to make level lines that are horizontal across the canvas. In this particular case, the dashes and dots create an implied line. It's not really a straight connected line. It's, hmm. But it gives the visual effect of linear continuity. I love the sparkles. They always do so much for me. They do. They just make everything just kind of wonderful. And again, once you know where your hammock is, you don't got to do a whole ton of sparkle work right there. <laughs> And that's why sometimes it's nice to sketch in or give yourself a rough idea where major objects are going to be so you don't put in five hours and then have to paint over it. Though sometimes you've got to. 
sometimes to get continuity of line or, you know, you might have complicated grass shapes coming up and some of it's got to peek through. So you might do more of the work for that. But in this particular case, we can absolutely... not have to worry about what the hammock would be blocking. Right. How that's doing? Look at good. Now there is light and stuff rippling around this water, but it's churned a little more, so it will be a, a bigger... kind of reflection once mm -hmm. it gets into the water that's moving a little more actively. There we go. Get back into my number four. And come here and make sure that even here. Sparkle, sparkle, sparkle. There's a little sparkle, sparkle. But we also see the shadow starting to take shape. Mm hmm Just pushing those stronger lines now through here mm -hmm. around what we've got going on. And that is that step. Now, before we come back, we should dry it. That way we don't drag paint around the surface. Okay. And we'll come back and start adding in maybe some tree object. I'm going to go forward and start putting in the tree. Putting in tree shapes are, is always a fascinating endeavor. Uh, if you haven't done it uh, before, mm -hmm. definitely follow along. You use the reference. Try to anchor yourself. Don't rush. It's good to have a brush that you can count on. This is a number four round. It's got a nice point. I'm going to come here and begin to build out. This unusual tree, and I like to make kind of strong angles in these particular branches. Mm. Is there any rules to those angles? There's not so much a rule, right? Other than because the thing is, is there's all these trees that break the rules, but there's certainly some guidelines. Um, if you've ever pruned a plant, you'll know that certain joints tend to uh, be more likely to make a branch. Mm, okay. which is why you would prune them. So that experience, if you have that in gardening, can actually really help you here. What I find is I try not to make um, the three prongs, which I don't really have a way of demonstrating here, but it's where you just come out three prongs like a pitchfork. Hmm. You know, and that can be pretty tempting to make the three prongs. As one might. Now, actually, this is, this tree is breaking apart here. Not breaking, like splitting, but it's two branches. And we'll craft that with the shading mm -hmm. that we'll be using. But initially, we just need to paint in the solid form. You'll see me swirling out the black and kind of bending this out. And I've got a little joint here and I'll wiggle back. A lot of this is going to be if we can twist the branches and wind them around each other, 
Trees grow in three dimensions. Yeah. That's a nice little twig that went off there. So being able to capture that kind of feeling of trees growing in three dimensions can really help them feel alive. Mm -hmm. Plus we get to do this really great tree hugs the moon event up here. Like if I want to spend some time up here, even before I connect the branches, mm -hmm. I can do that. I'm going to be on the toe of this because I want to make lots of little branches coming off. There's just so many little. And all these, like a bunch of these could have these wonderful little pink flowers. This is based on a real kind of tree. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what it's called, but it's a real tree. That grows near the coast, I believe, in the Philippines. Hmm. So if That's you're from there and you know this tree. If you know the, the tree. Tell us what the tree is. And maybe I'll paint more of these trees. I'll, like, search them by uh, name. You can see I'm just adding lots of little branches. I love the the, the crickiness of the tree. Is that how you say it? Yeah, it's got crickety branches. You want to make lots of crickety, crickety branches. Might extend this one out and make it a more stable kind of branch. I want to make it longer and more. Look at me. So your branches should be thinner than the branch they're attached to. Your tree gets ever younger, ever skinnier as it grows out. Mm. I want to make sure that I had that there. What can be hard for you as a new painter for you guys at home is getting the fine lines. Yeah. And that can take a bit of practice. And I literally mean that. I mean like pull out a scratch canvas or a scratch piece of paper and practice with the brushes that you have and the paint that you have that you're, that you can get these fine lines that you're looking to get. Yeah. You know, don't discover on your canvas that you're having a technical challenge. Yeah, no kidding, huh? It's the bummer time to find that out. Now, this tree is hugging the moon. It really is. That's what we're trying to paint there is this like kind of opening where the tree is hugging the moon. You know, all through there, I can put little flowers on the edges of that. Mm -hmm. I have so many options to play with. And the other thing is, is this gives me that wonderful red color we're going to have in the water later. That is not from a shark, John. No? <laughs> no. What is it from then? Flowers. Uh... Flowers. No sharks. There's no sharks on this beach. The shark-free beach. <laughs> I'm glad you think so. They got a shark net. They do. So there can't be any sharks. Otherwise. You know what happens? What happens? Just shark bait. No, it's like, oh, like the net is like, you. when you look at this, you just <laughs> think somebody's feeding sharks. I just think that, you know, a hammerhead sharks going to come along and go, what's that? That would be such a bummer. 
<laughs> it would really ruin the vacation, wouldn't it? It would, man. So I'm like, yeah, no. Now, while I've got this here, the other thing that I can do is I'm going to come along this ledge of this hammock. And the bottom side, I'm going to do in a dark color. It's, it's shady. Isn't that fun? Yeah. Mm, that's a little silhouette of that. Little silhouette of that. And come and get a little brown and black. Okay. I'm gonna have a little white in it. We'll paint the inside. This is just the start of that. Many more colors and values on the inside. We're just starting it. Mm -hmm. This is called blocking in. This is me getting the turn on that. And so I see right there, right? Yeah. Where I'm going to want to come back because I got a little hole in my sparkles. I'm going to get rid of my chalk with a wet brush. And then I'll have to put some sparkles in now or later, but we got a hole in the sparkling. Doesn't take much. All right, dry it. Yep. We'll come back and we'll start to add some detail. Now we've got to give our tree shape and talk about what branches are going in front of other branches because they're not a two-dimensional surface flat to picture plane. Mm -hmm. I'm going to continue with my number four round. And I'm going to grab my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna because they make an incredibly cool, barky, tree-y brown gray. Because right? they make a gray. If you get that white in there, you can really see that's a gray. And so we can really play with the browns and this to start to build up dimensionality. Mm -hmm. The front of the trunks... will definitely have some more... Light reflecting on them. Yeah. And so we're going to be playing with that here. Playing with the bark. A little more brown in it. Tree, any tree that could weather itself out by the ocean's edge. Yeah. Is a tough tree. It's not a faint of heart tree. Mm -mm. Bark is rough, so I'll use a kind of rough brush strokes to express it. I'll pick little bits and highlight and kind of work little areas of this. Where we start talking about this tree and its little tree personality. Yeah. Taking a little burnt sienna and coming down here. You can always roll out. Keep the contrast on your branches, which means from light to dark, if mm -hmm. you want them to maintain shape. They need that contrast. 
if this branch is going in front of the other ones behind it, you just have to continue that line on. So if this one goes behind it, you continue the line like that, going behind the branch. Wow. That's how we're going to weave the branches in positioning to each other is by where the line continues. And we're just pulling in a little little personality. Mm -hmm. Trees have a lot of personality, so we got to get it on there. Especially this one. This one, yeah, because it's, think about it, it's living near salt water. This is. How tough does this tree need to be? No kidding. To be here. Think about your, like, garden and how, like, precious your plants are. Like, if you do the like, slightest thing wrong where they're like, no, I'm done with you. And you're like, no, please don't be gone. <laughs> Take a little of my ultramarine over here. Just making some rough brown gray. Lots of bark. Bark is colorful to me. Mm -hmm. Then we get to put flowers on here too. I'm so excited. When we get that in, we we'll rinse out. Get a nice gray going. And I may kind of turn this a little bit to the side so I can kind of see it. Well, you, you'll find that when you're painting, sometimes there's a glare mm -hmm. that you've got to work around. And so that's what I'm doing there is I've got this glare. I know I want to work around. I can see the camera because I have two cameras, ang two camera angles. I can see the stuff. Exactly. Now I'm going to come grab a little bit of black. I'm going to put a little shadow in there. That's like, that's like maybe a broken little hole or stump or something that's going into the tree. Mm-hmm. Bring little highlights there, little gray highlights along the branches. Branches have personality. Yeah. We're going to paint a little personality in the bark. Really think about what it is. I like that. It's fun. Yeah, I can get a little green into it. Mm hmm And that really pulls it into this ocean space. Green and yellow. Creating a barky, barky little tree. Yeah, it does. Marky bark. <laughs> <laughs> a tree cousin of Marky Mark. <laughs> It's just really dry brushing this through. I'm trying to make rough brush strokes that allow the paint that shows through underneath. Man, now are you using uh, the surface is dry? The surface is dry. The brush is not very wet. Okay. Enough moisture that the paint can leave it, but the brush itself is really, truly not very wet. I'm 
a little more yellow and white. Get that next layer of highlight, right? Yeah. Not everything, just a few places. Wow, this is amazing. I like the tree a lot. The tree wants to be well represented, seen for what it is. Beautiful creature. Yeah. And a lot of this is, it works because there's contrast. No, it works because we're contrasting things. We're saying, hey, there's this kind of magic stuff happening here and you can see it. Doesn't have to be everything everywhere. It can just be some places. Yeah. Because we're also going to be putting those flowers in. Mm hmm. And you need the, the tree to feel like it's at night. Another thing I can do is I can take a little of the blue. This really does have that night feeling. Yeah, it's tree at night. Yeah. I mean, it's a less interesting tree. I don't want to take it totally to the edge because the water and the blue will. Seem like they're too close. But that's mm -hmm. kind of a nice thing that you can do is a little blue. And you even get a little violet. Just a couple places to make the tree colorful. But don't paint it out where it blends into the background. And if and if you do, you come back with like a little burnt sienna. Okay. You can just layer up trees, especially this kind. Oh, yeah. Show all of its personality going off into the background. You just want to have enough little contrast happening here. You want to kind of see everything that's going on. At this stage, I would dry it before I started to put the flowers on. Okay. So we're going to add a little color to our tree and make it fanciful and fun. I'm going to grab my number four round again and... Mix a little of my cad red and quin magenta together, half and half, one part to one part in equal amounts. I really like this color mix. And then I'm going to take some of this color mix into my dot ox purple for shadow. That's where my shadow is going to come from is those two mixed together into dot ox purple. Pull this over there so that they're in reach of each other. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to begin to. Create little clusters of blossoms. Now, I remember you in other other paintings you talked about painting the shape and not the flower. Yeah, we paint that. We paint the shape of the flowers, but not each individual flowers, because this particular grouping is is a series of flowers that are bunched together. Hmm. That's a little harder to just just you know. Try to paint every single individual flower. And it really wouldn't look right. So these are the clusters where little bits have form. You can see we take these about around branches and layer them under, over, all, everywhere. That was one of the things that I thought was super exciting about this particular tree is that it had such nice clusters of flowers on mm. it, which you wouldn't expect to anything that lived this close to seawater. Wouldn't expect it at all. Yeah.
like clouds, you've got to just sort of think about it. Some of these should be smaller. Another good thing to remember is that sometimes you'll see the branch that flowers are attached to, and sometimes that branch could be so tiny or in a perspective you wouldn't see it. Mm -hmm. So that's an important thing as you're adding flowers to your tree. But you don't want to paint out all your branches that you have. Once you get your dark color in, you can kind of rinse out and come back into your cad red and quin magenta. And begin to put a bit of a brighter little spin on it, right? Yeah. I don't paint out all the shadow, though, because that's what gave the flowers form important to make sure that you are leaving a lot of the dark value that you initially just put down. The cad red and quin magenta make a very bright color combo, I feel. Mm -hmm. They're like a tomato rose. It's really neat. If you didn't have these two, you could probably do quinacridone red and get a similar result. I, li I like how pop this red is, though. It does just pop, pop, pop. I think Ruby Rod would be proud of this red. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's super green. You have to wonder for actors that play roles like that, like how annoying fans like us are, and we're like, refuse to let it go. <laughs> I'm never going to let it go. I have hmm? more range than just this one character. But it's my favorite. I don't expect the actor to play the character again and again. It's just my most beloved. Yeah. I get it. I love the movie. All the little flowers. When you go through and you have that, you can put a lot more magenta into this. Mm -hmm. And then bring over some white. And you get kind of an interesting little pink going. Sometimes I even get a little yellow into that pink. And I will add a few little highlights in the in the flowers. Not every, everywhere, but because it's nighttime. Yeah. But still the moonlight would capture, catch some of them. And they would have a few highlights. I actually spent a lot of time thinking about and painting these flowers. Mm -hmm. I haven't even gotten into my cad red and orange. Like, I just feel like these were just so kind of fun for me. Look at that and be like, you know, what do I think of that? And then I think maybe what if I took a little cat red and had yellow? Mm -hmm. Kind of also. Put a bit of that in there. Look at that go. Oh, wow. Play of all these things together. It's serious biz. That all comes together. It's really impressive. I think what it is is that this kind of flower at night, bougainvillea and stuff like that, they're almost luminous because the petals are very transparent and they yeah. allow a lot of light through and they have a lot of pigmentation. It leaves a tremendous amount of room for things to be dynamic. Now, 
And while I'm here, I can take some of these different colors, like my dots and my reds, come underneath. And then add that under shadow. Well, sometimes things that are above, they, they would reflect in the water, wouldn't it? And that's, you can use that red for a darker color, for like a darker shadow and not get into the blacks as much. And we just, and we haven't. Not that there's anything wrong with getting into the blacks. And again, we don't want to make it look like a shark in the water. You definitely want it to feel like. Right. It's just the flowers reflecting in the water. And when we're like right before we're all done, we'll put a whole bunch of flowers in the hammock and. But the pinks and all that, they really play beautifully against the turquoises. Mm -hmm. So I do like them. Oh, lots of those colors there are nice. Because it's under the tree. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a step. When we come back, we can start to paint in the hammock. We're going to start adding some dimensionality to the hammock, some texture and some feeling with the number four round. I'm going to come to the center of the hammock, and I've got my green from earlier. I'm going to add a little more yellow and brown into it, kind of grays out. We're going to come right here, begin to paint this lighter area. This is almost like an ochre. I'm going to turn this just so I can see this well. I can get a little black into this. Along here, it's kind of like a gray, a different kind of dimensionality. And I'm going to brush across, start to oh, apply yeah. some texture, a little bit of it. And get a little of the brown and come back. Okay, we're done. Mm hmm. A little brown and black coming down here, shading it in. Creating that inner shadow. Yeah, showing that a bit. We haven't, you know, these aren't the, this isn't the reeds or anything yet. This is just the beginning of, of the shape of that hammock. And come in and get a little maybe of my green, yellow and brown there that we had going earlier. Mm-hmm. This interesting little kind of color inside. Really rather a lot of fun. While this yeah. is having a dry, it needs to have a bit of a dry. I can come to the outside and maybe get a little of our burnt sienna and ultramarines. Okay, if you remember that makes all those fun grays. Yep. We don't want to take out too much of our dark color, but we can start to brush in some of this. A little bit of our ultramarine, just making little short brushing motions. Kind of fun. I can deepen the fold of that a bit. Oh, yeah. And come along here. I will be adding a highlight to that, but to highlight it, I find it's easiest if there's a kind of a dark line to begin with. Mm -hmm. Let's 
Make sure there's some nice structure there. While all this is having a little bit of a dry, one of the nice things that we can do is we can come in and, you know, perhaps get a bit of a light moon color going mm -hmm. to make sure that some of our tree. Oh, get some that, moon glow. If it needs it, if it if you're looking and you're like, okay, well, it needs it right there, anywhere that it could need it. You know, you can look around in your painting for different aspects. Here in the water, I can be getting a little of my brown and blue. Maybe a little more to the blue. Might get back into my purple, just making some dark colors under here. Mm -hmm. Just again to talk about that shadow. That's okay to do. I'm going to get a lot more yellow into this. Maybe a little brown. Brush across a little bit of a highlight. Maybe bring a little blue in here as well. Just kind of put things in a cool shadow. A little brown and yellow. And it gives us a nice beige, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. A wicker feeling. Kind of talk a little bit about maybe a, a braid here. And I'm going to let a lot of the dark color kind of show out so that the braid is visible. Oh, yeah. Just thinking about the little braid coming along there. That puts that nice little finishing edge on there. Well, you know, these, I think, based on what I was looking at, I believe this is woven mm -hmm. from natural plant fibers. I imagine so. So. I don't think that there's a 3M plant out there. Probably not. <laughs> Add some more little long kind of grassy strokes there. Mm-hmm. Because right, we want that to have that feeling. To get back into my kind of very light grassy color. Getting a little bit of that that texturing mm -hmm. where it's see the weave maybe highlights of it right. looking pretty good looking amazing come in get a little black Also talk maybe about a little bit about the texturing where there's a little shadow in the texturing mm -hmm. in the weave. Those little finishing details really make it nice. A little bit of texturing in the weave. You know, I can take a little bit of my turquoise and a little bit of my white. A 
a little bit there, like just like a kiss of it. That the little water is reflected back up on the hammock. Mm-hmm. Shouldn't be much, a little bit of that. And now we're going to take a look at that. If we're happy where it is, we're going to come back and pull the whole painting together with some finishing touches. So we can put some finishing touches on this that really pulls it all together and takes it to that next level. And one of the finishing touches we can do is up in the petal. We can add a few highlighted reflections mm-hmm. a couple of places, maybe like facing the moon. Oh, yeah. just so that there's a little more d- dynamic lighting around the petals because they can get, as the paint dries, it can go a little dark. So you want to make sure that you've got that rinse out. Now there's, I want to take my quinacridone and my cad red together in their brightest aspect mm-hmm. and get it on the toe of my brush. And I'm going to drop down From this tree, little individual petals. Little cascade of petals. Little cascade of petals. Maybe they fall into the hammock a bit. Mm -hmm. As they would. They would collect there, right? And that little color in the hammock, that can be inviting to us. Yeah. The little petals rested there and maybe, you know, we could rest there too. Mm -hmm. That looks pretty nice. Little petals in the hammock. Then I can take my number one monogram liner, kind of load it in my white. I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to come along my rope. Very gently. And add some highlights to the rope. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe our hammock would have a few little highlights to it, too. Those are some beautiful highlights. Little dashing highlights, because I don't want to take out all my dark or take out all the texture I worked hard to create. Mm -hmm. That tension, that's important, you know? Yeah. I can also highlight a few things around my tree just to help define some of it. Doesn't have to be every element of the tree, just a few. And I'm going to turn this a little bit so I'm not dragging my hand through wet paint. Sometimes things at night have a little bit of a haloing. Yeah. And we can play with that. with the branches around there. To help them show up like they're catching a little bit of moonlight. Mm -hmm. I 
I love that. Maybe a little bit catches some flowers in a few places. Yeah. Just a little bit. Everywhere. Like a little around where the light is. Is that moment where you kind of pull a scene like this together and you just want to take it till it feels restful to you, it feels mm -hmm. serene to you. You can even come in with your uh, detail brush and create small, right? We didn't paint every flower, mm -hmm. you know. Maybe a couple of these petals would be a little more to find. Not everyone, just a yeah. few, just a little bit. Here we go. Just wherever you're at. Wow. And as long as you're super happy with what's going on in the tree and what's reflecting in the water, mm -hmm. you can go ahead and take your, I'm going to grab a little of my green color because I want it to be kind of a watercolor and my number one monogram liner. And I'll go ahead and give this a signature. And that is just a nice calm painting that we can do. It really is. You know, remember, you've got all the support resources that you can check out at the website, and it's okay to use those. They can really help make a huge difference in your outcome. What you can see and what I can explain, you can probably do at home. You just need to have access to all the resources. Hopefully, this has surprised you for what you can paint. And hopefully it also gave you a little bit of a mental vacation. This is like this is like you booked a vacation way mm -hmm. <laughs> from the comfort of your own home. So it can be nice to paint these kinds of scenes because I think they give us a mental restful state. John, yeah. thank you so much for spending the day with me and helping make sure the cameras are focused on everything and making sure everybody at home can see everything. I really appreciate it. To you guys who joined us today, thank you for your time and trust in coming into this lesson. I really hope your result is makes you super happy and really was relaxing and took you away. If you'd like to share it, please come by the Facebook group, our website, theartsherpa.com, on any of the social media where the Art Sherpa is, and share your result with me. I'd love to see it. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.